Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and in this video I'd like to give you an update on the latest release of PyClone. I'll also be giving you an overview of how to install the application. There have been some common questions that have come up, so I want to give you some information. If you've had issues trying to run the first release, watch this video to help you understand how to get it set up. And finally, I'll be giving you an understanding of what I'm currently working on and what to expect in the next few weeks. So first, let's go and take a look at the release notes. So in general, I have updated to Blender 2.91. Obviously, that was a release that just came out from Blender, so I've compiled the code, and now PyClone is built on that version. I've also included a config directory with the default startup and user preference file. This just makes it much easier to get the application running to where all the information, all the add-ons will be enabled, and it will have some default settings that are already applied for you. And I'll go over that when I go through the installation process. I've also fixed drag and drop when linked assets are in the scene. That was a common issue that came up to where if you had linked assets and you tried to drag a cabinet or something into the scene, there was some error messages, so I've uh, fixed that issue. Um, on information specific to Home Builder, I fixed the pointer assignment to avoid issues with startup. And so typically if the material file information wasn't written on startup, then there would be errors when you tried to drop cabinets. And so I just kind of changed how that worked to make the application work when you first launched it. Um, I've done some naming convention changes just to avoid warnings on startup. I've added the edit wall mesh to the right click options when you select on a wall just to allow you an easier way to edit the geometry of the wall without having to apply the hook modifiers and things like that. And I've fixed an error when accessing the floor prompts with no material. And so there wasn't really a whole lot of new features or anything. Um, this was really just kind of a maintenance release and obviously the big one just updating to Blender 2.91. So with that said, let's go ahead and move on and do a quick walkthrough of how to install the application. And this will be for this latest release of 2.91. All right, so to start out here, I have downloaded the PyClone um, application. I'll put download links in the description where you can download, but I've downloaded it and I've extracted it to my program files, Blender foundation folder. So this is where Blender versions are typically stored. And so a lot of users have been just putting the uh, PyClone version in the same directory. Now, one thing, if you put it in your program files directory, that is a protected directory from Windows. And so most people have just been coming into this folder and then double clicking the Blender EXE. Now, depending on your permissions, you need to make sure that you're running this as administrator. And so with the EXE, you wanna right click and either select run as administrator, or if you want to make sure that this always opens up, if you go to properties, compatibility, select this run program as administrator, click apply and okay. And so now when you double click the application, there may be some warning that says, hey, do you wanna allow this application to make changes, just go and click yes, and that will open up Blender. And so with that done, you may need to activate the library again. If you click on this button, that kind of refreshes the information to make sure that all of the paths are set correctly. So um, just, yeah, click on this button, go ahead and drag a cabinet in, and this is what you should see by default. Now, in the previous version, you had to go through all of the steps to, you know, include the Pi clone, enable the add-ons. And to make this a little bit easier, I included a configuration file that has the startup and the user preferences already saved. And so here, if we close this down and we go to the 2.91 directory, you can see here we have this config folder. And this has the startup and the user preferences along with some other information that's needed. Now, if you want to configure Blender yourself, let's say you have your own startup and user preference file, I wanna walk you through the process of what needs to be added to your user preferences. So if you wanna try this again, if you just go and rename config to config one and then say continue. Now, if we create a new folder in here called config, now this will be a blank directory. And so now if we go back and start up the Blender EXE, now this is gonna look like the standard default version of Blender. And so in order to set this up, what you could do is you can go ahead and add in the PyClone workspace. And so you go and activate that. You can see that will give you the file browser and the 3D viewport here. But now we need to activate the add-ons. And so here, if we go to edit, preferences, 
Again, this opened up on my other screen. Add-ons. The first thing that we want to do is enable the PyClone add-on. And so here, if we go to Asset Management, that should be the only add-on that's available. And so when we turn that on, you'll notice that all of these menus go away to make room for all of the different library um, options that are going to go. Now, if we go to Asset Library, I typically like to enable Home Builder first because the way that you enable these will determine how they show up or the order that these libraries show up. So I enable the Home Builder library and then the Toy Box library. There are a few other libraries in this version that you can play around with, um, but I haven't really, they're pretty alpha at this point. There's still quite a few issues, but um, I wanted to include them just because there is some helpful functionality that I'll maybe cover in a later video. But with that done, um, the only other issue or the only other settings that I set in here is in oops, in the navigation tab. I select the zoom to mouse position. I cannot use Blender without this option enabled. And so I find it very helpful just to, when you zoom, it's gonna zoom in the location of where your cursor is located. And other than that, that's really the only information that I change within the um, user preferences. Here I go ahead and click save preferences after I've done that. And now we can activate the home builder library and that should work. In some instances, after you've enabled these libraries, you may need to restart the application. But here, if we try to drag this in and left click, it will typically give you this warning saying that, hey, we're trying to use Python drivers. And if you want to use them, you have to permanently allow them. And these are just kind of formulas that I use that determine the parametric functionality of the cabinets. And so this is an if statement. It may not look like much to you, but it's making some calculation to determine the part size. And so here, um, what you want to do is just permanently allow the execution of scripts and then click allow execution. And we may need to restart after that. Yeah, so here now the doors aren't coming through. And so all we need to do is just shut down the application, relaunch it. And here I didn't save my um, startup or my user preferences, but here if I just enable PyClone again, Everything should come in. So now if we try to drop in one of these cabinets, it will work now. All right, so that's the first step. Just make sure that your user preferences and all of the add-ons are configured properly. Next, there are some changes that I make to the startup file as well. And so what I typically like to do is, one, I like to shrink this down as much as possible to where there are just icons showing up here. And so if you hold down Control, push down on your middle mouse button and then move your cursor up, you can change the size. And this works for any panel in Blender. And so here I just make these as big as they can go. And then I shrink this down to where I can just see the icon. And then here I just kind of give this enough room to where just two rows are displaying in this interface. Next, I delete out all the information in the scene. And in some instances, you may need to go into the outliner, especially if you had a cabinet in there, because there are some hidden objects and things that are used to calculate the size. Um, and one thing that I'll do as well is I always like to turn on the interface splitter add-on that I've created. This will add a menu up at the top of the 3D viewport. And so now if I want to access the outliner, I could do that. And so from here, we can just delete you know, the whole hierarchy and just clear out basically everything within the scene. Um, Maybe I'll just delete the camera for right now. But yeah, one, make sure that all of the default information is just out of the scene. That way, anytime I start up a file, I don't have to delete the default cube and all of that information. Um, other than that, in the properties space, I go into the render properties and I enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Now this is, um, I find to be really helpful. It just really improves the visual look. If you see, that's what it looks like by default without those turned on. If you turn on ambient occlusion, you immediately, you know, can kind of see more details. You know, all the shadows are there just to kind of separate the parts a bit more. And then screen space reflections will just give you some nice reflections on the material. And so with that done, you know, I would make sure that I actually deleted the cabinet by using the delete cabinet command. And that deletes out all the information um, for that. But as long as I have nothing else in the scene, I'll go and collapse that panel. And when you have everything configured the way that you want it to, then you go to File, go to Defaults, and then Save Startup File. And the nice thing about this is that 
you know, this has been just saved inside my default version of Blender. So in the 2.91 here in the config directory, here are the files that it saved. And so it's going to be specific to this executable, this version of Blender that I have running. Now, one common thing that users have been asking about is if they, you know, they want to use the standard version of Blender as well. And so they want to be able to design within PyCloned where they can drag and drop and create, you know, the scene the way that they want to, but then maybe render this in eCycles or just open it up in the standard version of Blender. And that's totally possible. The only thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you copy the add-ons from this version. So here, if we go to scripts, add-ons, just copy the add-ons from here. And the ones that you need are PyClone. This holds the information as far as how the parametric libraries are configured. And then Home Builder. Those are really the only two that you're going to need because um, Home Builder defines you know, some of the right-click properties and things like that for the cabinetry. But you just go ahead and copy those. Here, if I go to 2.91, 2.9 scripts, add-ons, here we can paste them directly into this directory and then make sure, yeah, we continue with that. All right, so now we've added in the PyClone and the Home Builder library. And so now we can launch this version of Blender and we can open up any scenes. Obviously the drag and drop isn't gonna work. That's really the only feature that's enabled within PyClone, but you'll be able to open up any files that you've created. You'll just need to make sure that in your user preferences for this version, that you've also enabled the add-ons and saved your user preferences. That way, when you open up any files, it's able to read the drivers and everything else. All right, so finally, I want to talk about what to expect in the next few weeks. My main priority is creating training content. I plan on releasing a Patreon to allow me to focus more of my time on creating high-quality training content, but before I do that, I want to make all of the essential training. That way, anyone can learn how to create their own assets and use this library. But for those who want to support the project, you can get access to a bunch of really helpful training videos from creating different types of assets, design tutorials, tips and tricks, all sorts of stuff. So I'll make a public release when um, I have that available on this channel. So subscribe for future updates, and I'll see you in the next one.